Hello and welcome to Dove Biology Apes Lessons to Go. In this video we'll be exploring climate and terrestrial biodiversity. Now different climates will lead to different communities of organisms, especially vegetation. Biomes are large terrestrial regions characterized by similar climate, soil, plants, and animals. Each biome contains many ecosystems whose communities have adapted to the differences in climate, soil, and other environmental factors. Biome type is going to be determined primarily by precipitation, temperature, and the type of soil that's present. Over the course of this presentation, we're going to examine the three major biome types, including desert, grassland, and forest. It's kind of interesting that we actually see parallel changes that occur in vegetation type as we go from the equator to the poles or from the lowlands to the mountaintops. And a lot of this is due to the differences that we're seeing in temperature and precipitation. One way that we can examine the various changes that happen in a biome uh, at, in temperature and precipitation is by using a graph called a climatogram. Climatograms have two uh, y-axes, one for temperature and one for precipitation. The precipitation data is presented in the form of a histogram, while the temperature data will be presented in the form of a line graph. So the first biome that we'll examine is the desert biome. Deserts are classified as regions where evaporation will exceed precipitation, so there's going to be very little vegetation. Deserts will cover one-fifth of the Earth's surface, mostly at the lower latitudes, around 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. In order to live in these areas with such little precipitation, there needs to be specific adaptations for life. Desert plants will have modified leaves and stems to be able to prevent water loss. They also oftentimes will have modified photosynthesis. Many desert plants are succulents and undergo a form of photosynthesis called CAM photosynthesis, which stands for Caracillin Acid Metabolism. CAM plants will open up their uh, leaf cells, the stoma, at night to be able to bring in carbon dioxide so that they're not losing very much water. It's much cooler at night. During the day when the sun is out, the stoma remain closed. The uh, carbon dioxide is released from the organic acid that it was stored in during the night so that it can undergo photosynthesis. A lot of desert plants also have either deep roots or a modified stem which can expand to hold extra water. Animals in the desert need to stay protected and during the day when it's hot. So they will hide during the, night, during the day and then come out at night uh, when the desert's cooler. When we examine a climatogram for the desert biomes, we're going to see some particular patterns. The first pattern we're seeing, no matter if it's a tropical desert, temperate desert, or a polar desert, is that there's very sparse precipitation. Precipitation levels are very low throughout the course of the year. Tropical de deserts are going to be consistently high in temperature. Temperate deserts will actually see seasonal changes happening in the desert, uh, where in the winter times it's going to be kind of cold and dry, whereas in the summer it's going to be hot and dry. Our polar deserts oftentimes will also see some seasonal changes, but we'll also notice that the temperature gets much colder during the winter months in the polar desert. The next biome that we'll explore is the grassland biome. Grasslands occur in areas that are too moist for deserts and too dry for forests. Grasslands will be characterized by rich soil, scattered trees, and herds of hoofed animals. Grasslands typically will have seasonal precipitation and fires. One of the major characteristics of the temperate grasslands is that they often have deep and fertile soil, which makes them ideal for growing crops and grazing cattle. The fertile soil comes from the fact that all of the grasses that are being produced, when their organisms die, um, that organic material gets added to the soil, um, adding to its richness. Plants and animals that live in the grasslands need unique adaptations for survival. 
The plants are mostly grasses, and they're adapted for seasonal rains and fires. They oftentimes have deep roots or uh, thicker stalks, which allow them to resist uh, drought. In terms of fire, plants have to be adapted to either germinate when the fire happens or allow for the seeds to lay dormant until a fire occurs. The animals of the grasslands migrate. Um, their life cycle is tied to the seasonal changes of drought and fire. Prey species, because lack of areas to hide, must be able to burrow or to run fast to avoid predators. When we examine our climatograms for our grasslands, we see that as we spoke earlier, that our precipitation is very seasonal. Each one of our grasslands have a seasonal uh, rainfall. The tropical grassland, or savanna, is going to have consistently warm temperatures. Our temperate grasslands, or prairies, are going to have seasonal temperatures. The polar grassland, also known as the Arctic tundra, is going to be seasonal, but you can see that uh, it is only above freezing for a few months out of the year. As a result, uh, the polar grasslands precipitation is usually in the form of snow. As a result of having a lot of months where it is constantly cold, um, there is a type of soil that exists underneath the surface called permafrost that stays constantly frozen uh, for up to two years at a time. An intermediate biome called the chaparral, or temperate scrubland, is sort of like an in-between a grassland and a desert. The chaparral has moderate climate, but its dense thickets of spiny shrubs are subject to periodic fires. We see a lot of chaparral environments in uh, northern, central, and southern uh, California. Due to dry conditions and poor soils, Plants and animals of the chaparral have adaptations that are similar to desert organisms. Our final biome that we'll explore is going to be the forest biome. Forest biomes must have enough precipitation to support large stands of trees. Over one-third of the Earth's land area is forests. The first of our three forests that we'll examine is the tropical rainforests. Tropical rainforests have year-round uniformity, warm temperatures, high rainfall, and humidity. Decomposition will be quick, and most nutrients um, from our rainforests are going to be stored in the plants and animals of the rainforests. The plants themselves are mostly broadleaf evergreen trees that will grow in a multi-layered canopy. Anything that lives below that canopy have to be adapted for shade tolerance. The plants also have to be adapted to a nutrient-poor soil. There's not a whole lot of buildup of organic material because any uh, leaf drop that falls is going to be quickly decomposed and absorbed by the organisms of that drop tropical rainforests. The animals are, must be adapted to life in that layered canopy. They have to be able to fly or climb and exist amongst multiple layers. The next type of forest will be a temperate deciduous forest, like we have um, in central Virginia. Here the plants are adapted to seasonal changes by dropping their leaves as winter approaches. This allows for significant organic material to fall on the forest floor, which decays and builds up over time, creating nutrient-rich soil. The animals of the temperate deciduous forest need to be adapted to those seasonal changes by either hibernating during the winter months or by migrating. Our next forest that we'll look at is the evergreen coniferous forest that we'll find um, in northern climes. Uh, these are oftentimes also referred to as uh, the taiga or boreal forest. These consist mostly of cone-bearing evergreen trees. They keep their needles year-round to help trees survive the long cold winters. When the needles do die and drop off, they're going to make the ground very nutrient-poor and acidic, which prevents the growth of other plants on the forest floor. The animals that live in these colder climes need to be adapted to this by having uh, warm, dense fur or layers of fat, 
um, or they have to be migratory. We also have a fourth class of uh, forest called the temperate rainforests, like we'll see in uh, Washington State or Oregon. Here, these are found on the coast, and they support huge cone-bearing evergreen trees, such as redwoods and Douglas firs, in this very cool, moist environment. When we look at the climatograms for our forest biomes, we're going to see similar patterns. The tropical rainforest is going to have consistently high and warm temperatures. The temperate deciduous forest is going to have uh, seasonal changes. Our polar evergreen or boreal forest is also going to be seasonal, but much of the seasonal changes are below zero. It's going to be a very cold environment. Each of the forest biomes have pretty consistent high uh, levels of precipitation especially when compared to our desert and grassland biomes. Now, human activities have damaged or disturbed more than half of the world's terrestrial ecosystems. Humans have had a number of specific harmful effects on the world's deserts, grasslands, forests, and mountains. How long can we keep eating away at these terrestrial forms of natural capital without threatening our economies and the long-term survival of our own and other species? No one knows, but there are increasing signs that we need to come to grips with this vital issue.